Hi, my name is Deb Johnston and welcome to Women Reinventing Midlife TV, where we aim to inspire women over 50 to thrive in a meaningful life that you deeply desire and deserve. And today I want to share with you the foods that I eat to stay slim, healthy and vibrant as I age. And it's taken from a lot of the research that I've done over the last 30 years and also over the last probably five years since menopause. So 30 years is a long time to research food. And my research began when my beautiful mum passed away at a very young age of 51. And I made it my mission and I promised myself that I would live to a, a ripe old age and be healthy and vibrant until the day that I die. So that's where my research began. It was mainly to look at how to stay healthy and how to avoid diseases like cancer. And it's taken me on a long journey. There's been times when I've burned out too. So my research then started again around stress and cortisol to really re research food and find better ways of eating then. And then when I hit menopause and I started to put a little bit of weight on around the middle, it triggered a new lot of research around foods to eat to stay slim as I age because that was the very first time that I ever put weight on around the middle in my whole life. And I know that many of us have issues with weight gain in this phase of life. So I've been asked by clients over the time that I've been working in the coaching arena, which is the last 10 years, I've been asked by clients about my diet and the kind of food that I eat, how I keep my skin looking young and supple and how I stay slim, the kind of rituals I have and the kind of food that I eat. And about a week ago, I recorded a video on movement to stay energized at the age of 59, which was triggered by a trip that I had a road trip where I had no movement for two weeks. And, and during that time, I really reflected on, you know, how I'd had lack of movement and also how my eating, um, eating had changed. My diet had totally changed because we were eating out all the time. So I decided to do, number one, a video on movement, and I'll put the link to that at the end of this video so you can have a look at that one, and also to do a video on foods that I eat to stay slim, healthy, and vibrant. So let's have a look at them. Starting with number one, I eat lots and lots of veggies. And before I actually go into this, I want to let you know that I'm not a nutritionist. This is this is purely based on my own personal experience and the research that I've done for myself and my body over the last 30 years. I eat lots of veggies. I make sure I eat heaps of veggies, but I'm very careful of the type of veggies that I include a lot of and the type of veggies that I have a minimum of. So when I say lots of veggies, I'm talking about the cruciferous vegetables like kale, spinach, broccoli, broccolini, cauliflower, cabbage. They're the sorts of vegetables that I eat a lot of. They're filled with lots of yummy, nutritious um, antioxidants, vitamins, and lots of fiber. So really, really good for our body as we age. Vegetables that a lot of people refer to as vegetables are things like corn, which actually isn't a vegetable, it's a grain. Um, things like corn, yes, I do eat them, but I eat a very minimum amount of corn. Maybe I would eat corn about once a month. Uh, so corn is has a really high sugar count content. It's often um, chemically sprayed as well to keep the pests away. So I tend to stay clear of corn, even though it does have a lot of vitamins and minerals. So I just if I do have corn, it's kept to a minimum. Same with potatoes, they have a really high sugar content. And they have a habit of bloating me if I have too many potatoes. So I do eat potatoes and maybe eat them maybe once a week, but they're kept to a minimum. A better choice would be sweet potato or pumpkin. Again, though, they're high, higher in the sugar content. 
than, than the cruciferous vegetables. So again, I keep them to a minimum, even though they've got a really, really lovely high content of fiber, which is very, very good for our bodies. So veggies, I eat lots and lots of veggies. Uh, I eat lots of salads. Um, I put um, a, a big variety of leaves in my salads. I actually, we actually grow them at home at the moment. So I, I have the luxury of going out to my garden and picking leaves as I need them, which is even more beneficial because it's still filled with all that light energy from the sun and the, the leaves are a beautiful deep green. So I'll eat a mixture of different, um, different salad leaves. I'll eat things like rocket, all the different types of spinach. There are heaps of different types of spinach if you go onto your, into your local markets. Um, I eat lots of different herbs. I put those in my salads. Uh, tomato, avocado, which is a fat, and we'll talk about that a little bit later. Um, cucumber, I put carrot in my salads. I include lots and lots of different things in my salads that, that aren't probably something that you would include in veggies. So I'll talk about that a little bit later. Okay, so fruit. Yes, Fruit is a really great sort of source of yummy vitamins and antioxidants. And I do include fruit in my diet, but I do keep fruit to a minimum. I don't eat heaps and heaps of it. Now, remember that everyone's body is different. My body is very different to yours. So it's about finding out what your body does with these foods, how your body responds to them. So why do I keep my fruit to a smaller amount than veggies? Here's the reason why. Um, six years ago, I burned out with adrenal fatigue. And during that time that I was in recovery, I realized that I have fluctuating blood sugar levels. What I notice is anything that contains a lot of sugar, and even though fruit is nice and fresh and yummy, it contains high amounts of sucrose, which is a sugar. And if I eat too much fruit, it sends my blood sugar levels too high. And when blood sugar le levels go up really fast, they come down really fast as well. We know, the, we know the story, anything that comes up must come down. So I'm very, very careful of the amount of fruit that I eat. I normally eat fruit for breakfast in the morning, but I don't eat it on its own. I make sure if I eat fruit, then I, I include some kind of protein source like nuts, seeds. I might put yogurt with it, but I don't eat fruit on its own for that reason when our blood sugar goes up really high really fast and then it comes down really fast what it does it triggers the release of cortisol and cortisol is what gives us energy when our body feels it's lacking in energy the problem here is this too much cortisol in our system creates um, a, a, a fat building problem so it actually puts on the weight around our middle if we've got too much cortisol in our system. Uh, it causes stress in our body, a stress reaction. It causes inflammation. So this is the reason why I don't eat fruit on its own. But you might talk to a fruitarian and they do really, really well just eating fruit in their diet. Um, I don't know how they manage it. Hats off to them. I know I wouldn't fare well on that. But everybody's body is different. Always remember this. It's about playing with food and noticing what it does with our own bodies. One of the questions I get asked is, is meat, fish and, and fat good for our body? Meat, fish and dairy mainly. And there's a, often a big debate on this. There's many people that say it's not. Most especially vegans will tell you it's not. However, for me, I have found for me personally, it works really well with my body. But again, I keep it to a minimum. I will only have a steak maybe once a week, maybe once every two weeks. I'll eat fish maybe three or four times a week. And, and dairy, I will have a little bit. So I'll have a little amount. So in the morning, I might have a little dob of yoga on my 
breakfast or um, I might put a little bit of milk in my black tea. It's small amounts or I might have a little bit of cheese on a Saturday evening. It's small amounts that I include and I'm also incredibly careful about the type of meat, how the animal has been reared. So for me, my meat, I look for pasture fed, like I look for the for animals that have been pasture fed. So I am really looking for an animal that really has been pasture fed. I will go to my butcher and I'll ask lots of questions about this. I want to know where the meat came from. I want to know how the cow was raised, you know, how it was fed, whether it was free range, whether it was stressed out, because what I have learned is that if a cow is stressed, then the inflammation that is caused by that stress in the animal is then passed on to us in the meat that we eat or the fish that we eat or the dairy that we eat. So it's a really important thing to be aware of. So my meat is pasture fed as much as possible. The fish that I eat is wild caught from the ocean and I make sure it's fresh when I buy it. The dairy that I eat is biodynamic and organic. So it means that it's coming from cows that have been treated well and they've been pasture fed as much as possible. Isabella Natrines is a nutritional chef and she gave me a lot of this, this information. She has an incredible book, so I recommend that you look out for her book. I'll put it in the description notes underneath this video. Fats. So there is a big misconception that eating fat causes us to get fat and it doesn't, but it really depends on the kind of fat that we're eating. So trans fats, yes, they are going to help you put weight on because they cause inflammation in the body. Trans fats, fats that chips, you know, so the packet chips that you buy from the supermarket, they have trans fats. Margarines generally have trans fats. So this is fat that's been heat treated. Good fats are things like olive oil, uh, avocados, a lot of the nut oils, they're, they're really, really good fats and they're very good for our bodies. And yes, they are good for our bodies at a minimum. It's always important to remember that minimum because it creates balance. So yes, I do. I uh, have a lot of olive oil and a lot of these oils create uh, have omega-3s in them, which are very, very good for our bodies and they reduce inflammation. So I have a lot of olive oil. I sometimes uh, cook in coconut oil as well. I have heaps of avocado. I probably eat avocado every single day because it's a very, very healthy fat for my body. And yeah, it's not the fat that causes us to put on weight. It's something very, very different to that, of course, with the exception of trans fats. So yeah, I do include these fats in, in the food that I eat and it's an important part of my diet. Nuts, seeds, legumes, they're all things that I have plenty of in my diet. The great thing about these two is a lot of them contain phytoestrogens, a, a high level of phytoestrogens, which is a great way to naturally put estrogen back into our body. And this is one of the ways that I'm focusing more on eating now. So things like soybean. Uh, chickpeas, sesame seeds, sunflower seeds, pepitas, flaxseed, they all have those high level of phytoestrogens and this helps fill up our estrogen receptors in our body. There's, there's kind of a, a big, big theory around this and it involves eating more frequently. So I encourage you to grab a book by Marion Stewart called Managing Menopause Naturally. And she talks a lot about this in her book. Also, Dr. Christiane Northrup, The Wisdom of Menopause is a fabulous book to get your hands on as well. So I do, I, 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 
pretty much include these nuts, seeds, legumes, probably in about three or four meals a day that I eat. Yeah, I do. I eat small amounts and I eat often. So this is one of the things that I've learned too, is the bigger portions, the bigger portions are what create the bloating. And a lot of that weight gain that we get around the middle is bloating. It's not actually weight gain. And the reason it causes bloating is because large amounts of food consumed all at once is difficult for our digestive system to handle. So it causes inflammation, it causes bloating. And just by having smaller portions, you can actually reduce that bloating. And this is what I found and it works for me. And again, I will say different things work for different people. So it's about doing your own research. So I talked a little bit about the misconception around fat, putting on fat. So here's the truth. Here's the truth. What I have learned over the 30 years of doing the research that I've done is the thing that really puts weight on is processed foods and processed sugar. This is where we get a lot of weight gain from. If we've got a lot of processed foods or processed sugar in our diet, then we're more likely to put weight on because it causes inflammation in our system. So processed foods can in include things like white rice, white flour, biscuits, cake. Ice cream is a processed food unless you're eating a bio biodynamic ice cream chocolate bars, you know, all those chocolate bars that you get in the supermarket, um, uh, soft drink, that all processed food, wine is a processed food. Yeah, I'm sorry, wine is part of it. So it's really about looking at what you can eliminate or looking at what you can reduce. Refined sugar, you know, that really white, the white refined sugar is devoid of all the beautiful nutritional value that is actually in the sugar cane. So white processed sugar is going to cause inflammation. And certainly I've found that for me. So I keep processed foods really at a minimum. The most processed food I eat is maybe I'll have a few rice crackers with some really, really nice cheese on a Saturday night with one glass of wine. That's my limit on processed food for the week. And when I choose the rice crackers, I really read the packet and I am very, very careful around what's ingredients are actually in the rice crackers. So I will look for crackers that are made of brown rice, preferably, and that they only have rice, normally rice and salt in the ingredients. So really important to look at what they're actually made of, your, your rice crackers, if you're buying your rice crackers. And so processed food, really important to eliminate. I want to let you know this. When I was recovering from adrenal fatigue, I cut out sugar and processed foods completely. I wouldn't have a bar of it. I didn't have alcohol for 12 months. I cut everything out. And I believe that had a big impact on my recovery, how well I recovered uh, during that time. Another big insight around processed foods is if we eat too many processed foods and too much processed sugar and wine, it actually increases menopause symptoms. We suffer more through menopause when we're putting processed food into our body. So it's really worth looking at it. And what I have found, it was really worth looking at reducing and eliminating those processed foods and that processed sugar. So the number one thing that I have learned is that balance is important. When I have mentioned the things that I've kept to a minimum, that is about balance for me. So I eat a heap of vegetables, most especially cruciferous vegetables, um, a, a little bit smaller amount of fruit, smaller amount, again, of meat, fish, and dairy. I eat plenty of seeds, legumes, nuts, really important part of my diet, tiny amount of fat, but I make sure I do have it. And I keep processed foods really, really down to a minimum if I have them at all. And I believe that is what helps me stay slim 
healthy and vibrant as I age. And I encourage you to have a look for those resources. They're very, very helpful. If you found this video helpful and insightful, then remember to give me a thumbs up and share it with your friends because we can all so benefit from this kind of information in this phase of life. And if you'd like to see more videos like this one, then remember to subscribe to my channel. Click the subscribe button underneath this video, the red subscribe button, and click the bell for notifications so you don't miss out. Lots of love to you. Thank you so much for joining me, and I'll look forward to connecting next time. Lots of love. Bye-bye.